this uh, yeah. this year, sixth of July. July. Yes. Six, yes. The sixth of July. Man, invite your friends. Invite your neighbors. Invite Bring your anybody. Friends, you know, be as Christ. much as you can, because I'm telling you, it isn't just us that's going to have fireworks, but. Uh, Tammy's brother-in-law always has a big fireworks. He came to ours one time, and then for the last four years or so, he's been having it at his place, and, and he has a massive fireworks. He's, he saves money, and he has fireworks all year long. Mm -hmm. And so he's decided, they've decided that they'd like to partake and help with Us. our show. So <laughs> it should be a really masterful show. Probably like a four hour uh, work. It probably will be. Because <laughs> you like, like, ten of them off, you think so it's the finale? Anyhow, and then you'll we'll have some more. I think that it'll be something that you really want to be a part of. Uh, Tyler says he, he, he is cookie? making some Berea tacos and some pulled pork, and I don't know what all he's got up his sleeve, but anyhow, he's supposed to catch up all the the eats for that day. Um, it'll be a feast. It'll be a party. And guys, listen, a party and our father, you know, I don't know. Oh, what a day it would be. You know. Um, music for that day, so that way I can... Music? If we want to do it like how we did in the past, because I know we had a karaoke, uh, speaker, music going. Yeah, we'll have some type of music and stuff. We definitely will have a, a class that will take oh, probably half an hour. 45 minutes to half an hour. Um, Brother Steve will will be doing that class for us. And, and uh, for you, so, uh, <coughs> forgiven. Forgiven is the class. Yeah. And forgiven. please bring a chair and a yes, passing dish. You might want to bring what? And a passing dish. Okay, so now, okay. You, no. This <laughs> chair. You're throwing new stuff on me now. But, <laughs> hey, how are you? a passing dish. And, Make sure you bring your, your chairs, something to set in, guys. Or a blanket. Um, blanket, I don't care. Um, I have made very good preparations for the grounds to make sure that you don't have bugs and ants and what have you carrying you off. Um, you know, I have no control of the nature, though, so, you know, I, I, I do my, I'll do my best to make it a good thing. Um, so anyhow, like I said, I know we got the rummage sale and all that stuff going on, guys, and, and that's one thing, but boy, don't lose sight of the fireworks, and, and don't lose sight of the inviting others. Don't be afraid to invite them. We'll make room, we'll do whatever we have to do to, to uh, get everybody in and, and everybody situated. So at the end of it, we try to light off the lanterns. Um, I don't know how many of them I'm going to need this year, but I will see good the Lord provides plenty of enough. enough for the kids, anyway. <laughs> yes, yes. So whatever, whatever the case may be. Um, anything else, guys, um, that I'm missing? Uh, Monday night Bible study, uh, Phoenix, uh, seven o'clock Monday here. Wednesday. Wednesday, our Bible study. Seven Wednesday, days. our Bible study. Um, be wrapping up for sure. We'll be wrapping up Second Thessalonians. There's only three chapters in it, so we'll definitely get through uh, First uh, or Second Thessalonians. <sighs> uh, love to have you. Uh, we'll go right on into Timothy. You know the life, the, the letters that Paul wrote. Um, so. What we're on, guys, in all reality, is the life and, and teachings of the Apostle Paul. The life and letters, we call it, life and letters of the Apostle Paul. So it's, it's been very interesting, very good. Um, if there's nothing else, any uh, birthdays, well, any, any special prayer requests, let's go there first. Ten, I have an update on baby Casey. They started chemo, they, they'll start chemo on Tuesday. He has eight weeks of treatment within 21 days. In between treatment, and will probably have to have surgery to remove the bigger tumor by his liver. So, just keep praying for him. Yes, yes, he's very, he's just a baby, correct? He's just a little over six months or under, yeah. yeah. So, you know, so I say, you know, guys, we think 
we've got problems, you know, here this young man comes into, into life and he's had all the stuff that, you know, can be possibly handed to him. I do encourage you to continue to pray, though. Our Lord is a great miracle worker. Uh, I've seen him do some wonderful things in my life as well as seeing him do them in your life as well. I want to remember Donna and her family and, and the upcoming weeks uh, for the loss of her mother. Uh, you guys, listen, that's, that's a tough one. And I know that it, it's, it's something that right now she's comfortable, right now she's doing fine, but you guys, listen, you know, I've been praying that God would just put her all back together. I don't know how that all works. You know, I've been praying after God, but she keeps breaking things. <laughs> I am breaking songs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Carl, how is Carl doing? He's doing. He's doing. Yeah, they haven't checked it, see if it's cancer yet. But they're going to do that in three weeks, I guess. Okay. But he doesn't like the nursing home at all. Well, I'm sure. <coughs> He's had the top quality care. And I also want you to pray for me, because I've really been having problems with my hip and my legs and my feet. And also, God is a great healer. Connie Boyd, my mad sister-in-law, mm -hmm. is cancer-free. But thank you, Lord, is gone. Amen to that, sir. Amen to that. Great, great, you know, success there, miracle actually. So, yes, thank you for that, Christine. It's good to see you, and I've been missing you so much. I know that you do so much that, you know, it occupies you, and, and then in the process, trying to keep yourself healthy and what have you. So, anyhow. They've got him medicated 
and that's supposed to turn that around somehow so it can at least, it won't go away guys, but it'll at least you'll be able to uh, handle the, the pains and stuff then. So, and Stephanie, his wife, said they caught it early. Yeah, Stephanie, his wife, said that they caught it early, which is a wonderful thing. Um, so anyhow, uh, keep him in our prayers as well. And there's nothing else, any birthdays. Anniversaries, and we should start auctioning some of them off. <laughs> anniversaries. You know what I mean, Jeff? Not, not yet, but <laughs> hey, Anyhow, guys, I love you so much. The Lord is good. The Lord has got a wonderful message. We've been running this series, guys, and the, you know, the understanding the gospel uh, is, is to live the gospel. Uh, another gospel that came back, I'm just going over the series, uh, Men Who Glorify God, uh, The Battle for the Gospel. Uh, don't be a spiritual blockhead. God comes along and wakes you up. You know, don't be a spiritual blockhead. And then last week, How to Get the Spirit. So many of us think that you have to do it by being a good person and doing the primitive proper. And the reality is, no, you get the Spirit by believing in Jesus. Christ and calling upon Him to be your Savior. This week, well now that we know what it is and how to get the Spirit, well this week we're going to come with the work of the Spirit, what the work is of the Spirit, what, what you'll see out of it. So anyhow, looking forward to that. Uh, if nothing else, what do you have for us this morning, Debbie? Leaning on the everlasting arms. And thank you for Tammy for providing the hotspot.
like for this off to occur. Really want to do this. Ah. Uh -huh. 
Yes, she's been on my heart and mind all this week, actually, Don. She says there's still Wednesday. Uh, there's still Wednesday, yeah. yeah. That's what I do. Sin. 
Now, when the Spirit shows up, He's going to convict you of missing out on God. You know, I, I tell you, I almost have a terrible time even bringing up the word sin any longer in my walk with Jesus. Because we miss out that and we compare ourselves to a sinful nature of the world and we're not that bad. But according to what the scripture says is, it says he will convict the world of missing out on God. Missing out, meaning sin, God can't have nothing to do with it, he can't have anything to do with it. So when the love of God comes along in his Holy Spirit, his job is to convict you that you've been without a God. You've been without anybody that's really for you. You've been without any compassion of a holy God. And of righteousness. And of judgment. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. Of sin. Because they do not believe in me. The missing of art, the missing of God's love and everything else is because they have not believed upon Jesus Christ. They have not believed upon the root in which God has gave them to be regained back to Him. You know, of sin because they do not believe in me. That conviction, that word conviction, on our series here we've been taking key words and, and looking at what it is. And that word conviction means to prove one in the wrong. In other words, that's the work of the Holy Spirit. It isn't to be buttered up and try to smooth things over so you can be partners with somebody. That's not what it's about at all. The work of the Holy Spirit is to come along and to prove that you're in the wrong. And thus, shame him and make you guilty. God wrote his Ten Commandments so that every man would become guilty before him. So that they would know, that they would be convicted that they're in the wrong place. They're outside of God. They're outside of his peace, his joy, his gentleness, his kindness. They're outside of the things that we know that was going on in the Garden of Eden. They're outside of having that fellowship with God and everything else. And that's the work of God's love in these vessels that carry the Spirit of God. That's our job. It isn't to butter them up and try to smooth them into our churches. That will never get a person saved because that's not the work of God's Spirit. His work is to prove one is wrong. His work is to be able to shame him and make him guilty. Not guilty because he's done anything any worse than you and I, but to make him guilty before a holy, blameless God. That true conviction is not a man, work of a man. It's not how a man judges you or how he looks upon you. That is not the work of a man, but it's the work of God. You know, it's the work of God. We all the time say, I wish that they would just be honest with me. And I can guarantee you that the Spirit never lied to you. I guarantee you that the pastor in that Spirit has lied to you. But that's one of the things that I hear. I wish these pastors would just quit being hypocrites. And I wish they would just quit being this way and just tell you the truth. And so then God blesses you with a pastor that lives just like you. He knows he's just like you. But he too has been saved by the grace of God. And I'll be praying, you know, I just, I, I, I'm overwhelmed with uh, the things that, uh, you know, that the Lord has worked in. You know, the one thing, you're right. I, you can't say, well, that pastor, he's weird. You know why? Because he acts just like us. He's not holier than that. And I am not. But I am saved. By the work of the Holy Spirit. You know? See, that man might be an instrument. That's something else. You know? And that man is a very instrument. But it's the work of the Holy Spirit inside of that instrument. That guitar has strings on it. But it's the work of the strumming of those strings that makes music. And it's the same thing. 
It's not the man. It's the instrument that God has placed his spirit into that all of a sudden becomes a great agent of conviction. How can he tell me that I'm wrong before God? Look at him. Don't look at me. Look at Jesus. He's the one who took care of it. The second thing, that's the work of the Spirit there, guys, is to convict you that you're missing God. It's not to convict you that you're bad. You know that already. If you look in the mirror, you know already. And the reality is, that work of that Spirit is to convict you that you're without God. It's not that you're without anything else, guys. We can make these things do things, but that too is a glory of God. The second thing that is the work of the Spirit is to be able to produce repentance, to be able to produce a time when all of a sudden God has grabbed your attention. All of a sudden God has grabbed your ear enough that you will listen to what God has said. In the book of Acts chapter 11, verse 18, the scripture reads this. When they heard these things, they became silent. When all of a sudden they heard these things, they became silent. And they glorified God, saying, Then God has also granted the Gentiles repentance to life. <coughs> so all of a sudden they heard how God has loved them for the first time in their life. And all of a sudden it made them silent. It made them just... Uh, I, I know it bothered some... But it makes them shut up or pin up or sit down or listen or whatever. But it stops them. And then when they respond, they came back with this. So then God has granted the Gentiles, the ungodly, with repentance to life? Has he not? Through faith in Jesus Christ, has he not come? What did Jesus say himself? For I didn't come for the righteous, but the unrighteous. I didn't come for those that think they're prim and proper and in line. I came for the unrighteous, those who need a physician, those who need a savior, those who need to have their mind changed. 2 Timothy 2.25. It says in humility, correcting those in opposition, in humility. In other words, humbling and being very, you know, listen, in humility, they are, he's come to, to those who are in opposition to the truth of God. And if God perhaps will grant them repentance, a changed mind, so that they may know the truth, that's part of that producing repentance. Boy, what is it? Here it is. Boy, for it's supposed to correct those that are in opposition to God. Oh, I believe in God. The minute you say that without faith in Jesus Christ, you're a liar. And the truth is not in you. And so God comes along and he says, if God so perhaps will grant them repentance so that they may know the truth. What is the truth? You ain't getting any better. I don't care. I used to think the same thing. When I was a youngster, I thought 18 would make me better. And then I realized that wasn't going to work, so then I thought it was 21. And I found out at 21, that wasn't it, so then I jumped to 25. And that didn't change anything. Well, maybe it's this, and maybe it's that, and maybe it's that. And finally one day, Instead of excusing myself and pushing the love of God away as it come knocking on my door, being proclaimed by those that had been filled by the Spirit, all of a sudden, God gave me some understanding. Amen? Amen. You know, He showed me what the truth was. Who was I running from? Who was I hiding from? <laughs> Who was I trying to be, you know, better than? Really, it just became very real that I was running and hiding and covering up before God the same as it was at the fall of man. And that's the first truth that I never heard and it come because of the work of the Holy Spirit. 
you know, the word grant. Grant means to give one of his own accord with the good will. It means that, you know, it, it's been granted to you. It, it's not something you got. It's not something you earned. God granted that repentance to you. The ability to change your mind. The ability to finally hear what God's sharing. The ability to know that you were running and hiding and covering up from a God who just loved you. That repentance is something that must be granted is also something else. Because the repentance of humanity is, oh, I'm sorry, I won't do that again. Seriously? I got a pile of, I won't do that again this much. You know what? And I look back over, it's like a broken record. I won't do that again. Well, I won't do that again. Well, that wasn't as much fun as I thought it was. And this is the reality. Because it has to be granted by God. It isn't by chance if you're listening today. It isn't by chance if you're sitting here today. That's something that God granted for you to have today. That's God who's granted that. And it's by God that this is granted. And it's by God that gift of eternal life. That gift of grace. Here, all of a sudden, I'm God and I love you so much. And I'm going to grant to you the ability to know that I've loved you unmeritedly, unconditionally, and I'm just found favor on you. I just love you there. You know? I know. All of a sudden, God grants you to be able to hear that. To me, every single day of my life, every morning I wake up that's brand new, I hear God telling me that He still loves me. And He has granted me the ability to repent of yesterday, leave that stuff behind me, get rid of it. To do what? To move on to perfection. To move on into Jesus. To move on to the wonderful the compassion God has. It's got to be granted. And it's a gift. And it's a gift of God's grace, unmerited, unconditional favor. That's not a work of something man can do. 21, 25, 30, married, house, cars, money. And then one day, God granted me the ability to hear his love through somebody else that had the Holy Spirit. That's not a work of humanity. What do you think you're going to get it? What do you think you're down the road? Well, if I didn't have kids, if I didn't have a wife, if I didn't have a husband, if I didn't have this, if I didn't have that, that's not going to get it, church. That's not going to get it, viewers. It has to be granted by God and it's not something you can work at. It's a free gift. The third thing. The work of proclaiming and revealing the truth to the heart and to the mind of humanity. You know, when you've been a liar all your life, that you're okay. And then God grants you the ability to understand His truth. <coughs> you know what? Uh, he gave that to you so that you can reveal to others the very truth of God's love for them. That too is the work of the Holy Spirit. Acts 2, 3 and 4. It says, Then there appeared to them divided tongues of fire, and one sat upon each one of them, and as they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterances. Now, that's been a play on for years and years and years about being able to speak in tongues. And you know what, church? There is such a thing as speaking in tongues, and I'll never say anything less than that. But if you're speaking in tongues... And it does not show anybody the truth or touch the heart or the mind of your hearers. It's better for you to only speak one word than it is to speak a whole bunch of them. 
But the change that I see that the Spirit's done is that new tongue that He's provided is one that used to curse God and use His name in vain and do all kinds of things like that. And all of a sudden that Spirit has came in and entered in and it's came in and entered in in truth to the point that now this tongue proclaims God's love for humanity. This tongue uh, proclaims the forgiveness of sin. This tongue speaks in the language of, I don't care, I deal with Spanish, I deal with all kinds of different people, and I guarantee you I can still share with them the love of Jesus Christ in whatever tongue they want to talk to. Amen. The Spanish wonder, how is it that you understand us so well? But you can't speak our language. And I said, well, sometimes you just learn to read people. And it's not too hard to tell when somebody's striving or struggling with something because they're downhearted and they're saddened and this and that. So it's very easy to come along and lift somebody up with that very love that God's provided. And you know what? We communicate great, wonderful things. God does that. But what we see here is the word filled. You know, they were filled. Each one of them was filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues. To be filled. And, you know, I don't know about you, but to be filled, you know, this is a cup. It's a, it's a wonderful coffee cup. But until it's filled with coffee, it's just a cup. Amen? Amen. You know, that word filled with the Holy Spirit, it means to be made full. It doesn't say that it got added to. It says that it's filled by the Holy Spirit. That means it's full to the top. To be holy. To be unaffected. To be influenced or by some means of God's gracious uh, grace and mercy. That's what it means to be filled. It means that you're clear up here full of God. And the reason that the Spirit does that, guys, is so that it can spill out of the cup and get on somebody else besides just yourselves. Amen? <laughs> and so as disciples, we're controlled by the Holy Spirit of God. We're controlled all of a sudden by the love that God has, the compassion, hun. You know? And they began to speak, and so do we. <laughs> Brother Larry, I love you. You know, that spirit working on him, he's like, man, I can't believe how I just let things just go on their way. I can't believe some of the things that God's blessed me with. I can't believe what I'm living today. Amen. And then he comes to the realization that it's when he's came to Jesus that all these things have taken place. Amen. You know? And they began to speak. And they began to speak the message of salvation. In the languages of those that were gathered around them. Whatever it is. If you want to be the low, then I'll be low with you. If you want to be somebody high, then I'll be somebody high. If you want to be somebody over here or somebody over there, I'll do all things by all means that some might get saved. See, immediately when the Spirit comes in, they start proclaiming and they start speaking the words of deliverance. Salvation. The third work, and the fourth work, I'm sorry, of the Spirit is regeneration. Now, some think that, okay, I come up out of the waters, I got regenerated, and that's it. No. You regenerate yourself every morning because every morning it's brand new. Amen. You can't take yesterday because you can't change it and you can't worry about the future because you ain't regenerated to the future yet. You know, you have to live it day by day. So the Spirit works every day, a brand new day of regeneration. That remembrance that God has loved you that remembrance that God has done everything it takes for you to make it back to Him. John 3, verses 3 through 6. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Most assuredly, that's 
God's son saying this straight out of his own mouth. And he says, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. You know how many people go around saying, I believe in God. You know how many people say that they believe in Jesus, but they have not been through the baptismal waters? Well, according to what the, what the Lord says, is he said, most assuredly, take this to heart. He says, unless one is born again, he cannot even see the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus responds, verse 3. Nicodemus said to him, Well, then, how can a man then uh, who is old, can he enter back into his mother a second time uh, to be born again? That sounds like the world to me. What well, came first, the chicken or the egg? You know, you got chicken, what comes first? You know? Oh. But the reality is, this is what he said. And Nicodemus says, well then, you know, how is it that a man, be when he's old, can he enter second time into his mother's womb and be born again? And Jesus answered, verse 5, most assuredly, here again, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That sounds like clear, true direction. Yeah. You know, straight up. And then he tells why. He says, because that which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. That that's born of God's love is God's love. That that was born to a mother and a dad of this world, that's flesh. And that does not entertain God at all. It can't. And then also in Titus chapter 3, verse 5, it says, not by the works of righteousness which we have done. So that takes you out of the picture of being a good person. It's not by the means of righteousness that you have, we have done, but according to His mercies, not giving us what we deserve, and he deserves to throw us right into the pits of hell. But no, not by that, but by his sheer mercies. He saved us through the washing and the regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Spirit. Here, let me make that in plain language. That he saved us. We were someplace we shouldn't have been, and he came along and he saved us. Amen. And through that washing, Of regeneration. In other words, getting all that stuff buried in a watery grave and being renewed to the very love that God has for your soul. That's what it really is. It's that very work of coming up out of there and here comes God rushing in before you could even get out the doors to get back into sin. God come rushing in. And He entered into them vessels by the works of His Holy Spirit. To regenerate you. What happens if you don't regenerate your battery in your car? It dies. It dies. Doesn't die instantly. Till the dark time, you turn the headlights on. But you do die. But God comes along and He's regenerated you back with <coughs> His love. We hear these things such as. Holy Spirit and all these different things, guys, and we think Casper in the sky or something. I don't know. But it's not about that. God regenerates you, keeps you charged up, keeps you full, and that so that you can be regenerated back into His love every single day. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> that one that He speaks about it means generation. It means uh, a kin. It means offspring. That very thing of being born anew. You know, that makes you of, uh, of the genealogy of God. That makes you of the very 
kin to God. That makes you of the offspring of God. That word is subjective, though. It's referring simply to an undefined action as the opposite of which is contagious. That very action of, of regeneration, that's contagious. God comes along and shares with you that he loves you. That's contagious, guys. I've been sharing this with Corby for some several years. And you know, he probably thought it would never get on him. But it got on him. And it was so contagious that he couldn't fight it off. And he ended up coming through and following in a scriptural baptism. I don't know if you guys know Corby at all, but look at his text today. Look at all the different texts that he sends and the music that he sends. That stuff's all over you, buddy. Thank you, Lord. It's contagious. You know? <laughs> it's just all over us. Contagious, continuous. It means again and again from above. That love of God is constantly there, guys. It's constantly regenerating you. Jesus refers to it as birth that comes from above. That's what he says. And God says from heaven. You know, that's what's in, that's what's up there. It's heaven. In other words, before a man can see the kingdom of God, he must first be born from above, regenerated. He was running around on dead batteries and wondering why life wasn't more filled. And God comes along offering the most wonderful grace, uh, grace and mercy. And you know, we just don't take it. But once you've tasted of the good graces of God, thank God He regenerates us every day. I wondered what's kept me in the ministry for all these years because I surely don't find myself worthy. But it's God who keeps coming along every day and regenerating me with his love. And it's the same thing that happens with us. See, you got to be regenerated from above. Not from the people's approval down on this earth. The fifth thing. The work of the empowering Christian to live in Christ. It's as a guarantee. And I said, all of us like guarantees. We buy a car, we like a warranty. We like a guarantee that it's going to be a good car. You know? And if not, you know, sometimes we'll even buy an extended warranty so that we can make sure that it's a good car. Ephesians 1.14. It says, who is this? Who is the guarantee of our inheritance? Until the redemption of the purchased possession. To praise only his glory. That guarantee. It means earnest money. That guarantee means it's a pledge. It's something which stands uh, for a part of the price. That guarantee means that it's paid to, uh, beforehand to confirm the transaction. I was once lost, now I'm saved. You're guaranteed by the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. You're guaranteed. Spoken of the Holy Spirit, it's which God has given the believer in the presence to be able to assure them of a future eternal inheritance with Him. You want to see it? 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22. It says, who also has sealed us and given us the Spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. It's the work of the Spirit. 2 Corinthians 5.5 5. Now he who has prepared us for this very thing is God. It's not man, it's not the preacher, it's not the teacher, it's God. Who also has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. I have to scratch my head. We all like guarantees, right? Every dollar you'd like, 
every dollar you spend, wouldn't you like to be guaranteed that it's worth that spending? Every penny. And as the spiritual fruit is produced with this guarantee, Galatians 5.22 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy and peace and long-suffering, kindness, goodness, and faithfulness. That's the guarantee that you have, that you're going to have love and joy and peace and long-suffering and kindness and goodness. And I love that God put long-suffering in there. I think how long-suffering our Lord is. How long He had to put up. You know, 33 years of his life. Long suffering. Just to go to a cross so that we can be made right with God. Kindness. Goodness. Faithfulness. Those are things from the Spirit and the work of God. As one who enables us for service. That's another thing that the Spirit does. It's one who enables us to be able to serve God. 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 7. There are diversity of gifts, but the same Spirit. One Spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. One Lord. And there are diversity of activities, but they're all the same God who works all in all. It's God. The Spirit of God. Verse 7. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. This love, this peace, this joy, this long-suffering, this gentleness, this kindness, it isn't just for you. It's to profit all. Now that should change some situations in your life. You got love and peace and joy and long suffering and kindness and gentleness. That is supposed to be given to all. It's also something else. This empowerment of the Spirit inside of these vessels. It's the one who illuminates the Word of God. You know, it's one who just brings the brightness. I don't know. Doc, you better hurry up. I got to get to church. Shh, shh. No. I don't know. I've got to make it to church. Shh, shh. That's illumination of God. But so that we know it's of God, let's go to His Word. John chapter 14, verse 26. It says, But the Helper. The Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I have said to you. I love you. Every single thing. You're perfect. Every single thing. You're loved. Every single day. There's joy. Every single day. And God will bring that to you. In remembrance of all that I have said to you, he says. So as one who grows in the church and comforts God's children, that's something that has happened through the Spirit of God. <laughs> Acts chapter 9, verse 31 says, And then the churches throughout all of Judea and uh, uh, Galilee and Samaria had peace and were edified and, and walking in the fear of the Lord and comforted by the Holy Spirit and they were multiplied. You know guys, the work of that Spirit, it isn't just so that you can have peace, love, and joy. It's so that the people around you can have peace, love, and joy. Putting up with. My God, I think about what God put up with in my life. And here every day he still says, my peace, my love, and joy is a love and for you. You know, that should be multiplied to others. So the charge from the Spirit this week, church, is the Spirit of God, is it working in you? Is the Spirit of God working in you? 
or for you. And if so, there's where's the people? They're supposed to be multiplied. Where's the people? If it's alive in you and it's abundant and you can't, it's regenerated every single day, where's everybody at? It was alive to me and I shared it with a guy sitting in a dairy covered in poop. Look where he's at. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And not many of you that's ran and hidden and covered up. I can't come there because the next thing I know, the preacher won't leave me alone. Well, no, I'm all over you, honey. <laughs> <laughs> you know? My guy's weird. But you're sitting here today. You guys, listen, that's the work of the Holy Spirit. So where's the people? See, if they don't come confessing Jesus as your Lord and Savior, then church, they can't have the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. So my challenge and my charge from the Spirit today is, if you have the Spirit, show it to people. You have been regenerated into God's love. You have life everlasting. If you have, you know, I keep going back, if you're a millionaire and you don't have no need for nothing because you got money, well, what about a Savior that gives everything? What if all of a sudden we took heed to that Spirit and that working within us? How much more do you think we could do if we knew that it wouldn't run out? How much more love do you think you have if you wasn't afraid it would run out. Well, I'd like to get to sharing love with other people, but you know, I you know, I'm still struggling to believe it for myself. You need to be around some, some people who just bore you. You need to get back to God's word and say, Well, yeah, that ain't the work of you anyhow. That's a work of me. I guess I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> so anyhow, guys. If you're here and you haven't confessed Jesus as your, as your Lord and Savior, if you haven't confessed Him as your Lord and Savior, if you haven't been born of water, you cannot see the kingdom of God, come confessing Jesus today. And if you have already done those things, then understand the work of the Spirit in these vessels. That's a perfect, holy, and blameless vessel of God's blood. That puts a smile on my face. Because he was just a neighbor once. He's a child of God today. You know? There was ones that were scared to death to come to church because of preacher. Now we just love you. Now she can't get enough of it. <laughs> there was those that were struggling for a mate. And God just placed it in her hands. Thank you, Sissy. Thank you, Lord. You know? It's those things, guys. But that's the love of God that we have in the Spirit. And it works in these things. I wish that neighbor just leave me alone. I mean, because I love you. But it's only because of what God has placed in this vessel. It's not a work of myself. So don't stand on the outside any longer looking in. Get in. So that you can be saved today. Let us stand together. What do you got for us now? <laughs> Shut it. That's not my fault. Uh, stand up. Stand up for Jesus. <laughs> there you go. Shush. No, did you end up hitting the up button for the fish? No. Oh. <clears throat> no. It's just for the Enoch King.
I love you all very much. The Lord loves you. Man, go forth knowing that the work of the Spirit is inside of you. You know, guys, listen. Though we know what the work of the Spirit is now. It convicts men of being away from God. It has an opportunity to be able to introduce them and regenerate them back to the Father. And then it has the ability to do this forevermore because it's a work of God within you. I love you so much. Bless the Father. Father, we just come to you at this time, Lord, and I thank you so much for this little series that you gave, Lord, and just the backing one up with the other, Lord, and just knowing that, you know, your spirit is alive in us today. Boy, Father, to see that presence of your love in these vessels, Lord, it can save any man, I know. And Father, listen, I just ask as we go forth this week with all the prayers that have been mentioned on our prayer list, Lord, that you just give us the victories and let us know that we are your children. Father, once again, I thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit. In Christ Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.